according to Wikipedia, a paradox is a statement that apparently contradicts itself and yet might be true. Since logic proceeds by avoiding contradictions, a paradox is a serious challenge to the logic on which mathematics is based. Many mathematical arguments, those involving proof by contradiction, are based on the premise that a contradiction cannot arise, so that if an assumption leads to a contradiction, that assumption cannot be valid. For example, suppose I want to prove that if n is an integer, such that n squared is an odd number, then n itself must be odd. I prove this by assuming I have a contrary example, and I aim to derive a contradiction from that assumption. So I assume that n is an even integer with this property, so that n is twice k for some integer k. Then n squared is an odd number by the assumption and proposition, but n squared is 2k squared, which is 4k squared, is clearly divisible by 2, so n squared is clearly an even number. So n squared is both odd and even, which is a contradiction. So our initial assumption that n was an even number cannot be valid. We've shown n cannot be even, and therefore n must be odd. So that's a simple and not very interesting proof by contradiction, but a paradox is a challenge to this kind of proof because our argument depends on the fact that a contradiction must be impossible. You might think that in an ideal world, there would be no paradoxes. But in that case, medical care would be rather limited, because in such an ideal world, there can only be one doctor. Why? Because if there are two doctors, then we have a paradox. And, yeah, OK. Sorry, OK. We need we needn't dwell on that example, thankfully. <laughs> but there are other cases which are less easy to dispose of. Raymond Smolian tells a story that when he was a student, he needed extra income to support his studies, and he applied for a job as a vacuum cleaner salesman, which was a rather dubious employment opportunity then available to students. During the interview, he was asked if he would ever be prepared to tell a lie. Now, he was a very honest young man, and there were no circumstances in which he would be prepared to lie. But he really needed the job, and he knew that if he said no, he wouldn't get it. So he replied yes. So was he lying? If he was lying, then clearly there was a situation in which he would lie, the interview. Um, so, what, so he was prepared to lie, and the statement was true. In which case, it wasn't a lie, um, so, he, so he wasn't prepared to lie, and he had told a lie and we can go around this loopy argument forever. And such paradoxes go back a long time. You're probably familiar with the paradoxical statement, this sentence is false. If it is true, then since it asserts truthfully that it is false, it must be false. If on the other hand it is false, it claims falsely that it is false, so it must be true. And in either case, we have a contradiction. This is a version of the Cretan paradox. Someone who is themselves a Cretan says all Cretans are liars. Indeed, it is found in this form in the Bible, in the New Testament book of Titus, chapter 1, verse 12. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said the Cretans are always liars. And a more recent example came from the confidence trickster and later FBI informant Mel Weinberg, who was the inspiration for the film American Hustle, was testifying under oath. He admitted that he had once described himself as the world's biggest liar, but he said he'd been lying when he said that. 